Hello, and welcome to In the Court of the Wind and Nave. Like some mad OCD mental illness, we carry on onward towards the end. We're, we're not really not that far away from the end. We've got to the final run of live albums. Possibly the most pointless part of this series, but we have to let's just get through it. It'll be it'll be fine. We've already done the Mark 7 live run, obviously. Fortunately there's only three of these. 2003, Electric. This is the, the live album. The proper live album from 2003, the main one. Single disc. It's an edit of Japan. Uh, 2003 is strange in that everything's perfect. We've got definitive material. It's all really very well recorded. The sound is better than the 2000 recordings. Um, Adrian Blue's voice is better. But somehow it just doesn't do it like, like 2000. I don't really know why. There's less magic. Still fantastic, but there is less magic than 2000 for whatever reason. The, I think Fripp was unhappy, was suffering, touring was, was just sucks kind of thing. Um, there's also this thing possibly that Trigun had got too big for his boots or maybe you know he'd come to the end of this particular cycle of his mu musicality and, and was kind of taking things a bit too lightheartedly. Maybe there was uh, maybe he was rude or something. He was calling the soundscapes Asswind. Was that a thing? Was that actually part of the problem? I don't know maybe. At the time I, I've Seemed like, sound like, sounded like it was, my bad for reading, reading too much elephant talk. But he did point out, apparently during this tour, he said he realised he re achieved all his musical aims, which is a sign of, right, well, it's time to move on, isn't it? You know, you, if you're finding things easy and you know what to do, it's not King Crimson. You're supposed to find things difficult and not know what to do and try to figure out what to do. Um, there's nothing wrong with any of this stuff, it's awesome. So, you know, it, I just prefer 2000 mostly, not completely, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, there's no improvs, sort of. Which is strange. So yeah, this is, this is actually one disc edit of effect, effectively the Japanese, the, the Jap, Japan 2003 DVD, Eyes Wide Open DVD. I don't think there are any differences, I think they're the same performances as far as I can tell. This is, but like I said, this is the mainstream release, so this is the follow-up to Heavy Construction. It's not Heavy Construction. It's one disc for a start. So it's all a bit meh compared to that. It's fantastic, but it's a bit meh compared to that. Compromise. They have to compromise to get on one disc, but maybe that's the idea, is it's, it's a more mainstream release, you know. So yeah, it's slicker, they've got more material, it feels finished, uh, but it's not as good as the, you know, the lo-fi, quite lo-fi heavy construction. And edit ever show never feels quite right, you know. It felt a bit pointless as well because we already had the DVD, but that misses the point, you know. Um, it just feels like an edit of a King, Crim King Crimson Collectors Club, so it, it's aimed at a mainstream audience, that's fine. You know, and some of these versions are definitive, I think. There's no deception of the thrush. Weird. I, I don't understand. And this is the thing, I really like the version on the DVD of Deception of Thrush. And I wonder if most people do. It, it's, it's a strange thing. There's a sudden jump in sound at one point, which is possibly not supposed to be there, but I, I felt the stick sound was fantastic. Uh, you know, as, as always, the, the Japan performances are always reliable. And yet, in in this case, various things happened where the, they were delayed and, and they didn't have time to get over the jet, jet, jet lag. And I remember Fripp commenting that some bits were, were not usable on the shows they recorded. And I'm not really aware of anything. Maybe that deception of the thrush thing, maybe not. He says you need you need three days recovery from the jet lag, and they didn't get it because they were delayed. Apparently this is the first time they all used in-ear monitors. So that would have taken time to get get used to. So yeah, um, track one, introductory soundscape. It's a nice, scans, nice soundscape. Funny, it reminds me of Japan 95, um, which was a revelation. It's the first time I heard King Crimson properly other than in the court. Uh, track two, Power to Believe, one, the acapella. It is better live, strangely. I mean, it's, it's just vocals, isn't it? But it, I think it's better live. Track three is level five. Uh, that might be the definitive live version from 2003. I don't know about whether to compare it to the other versions, but 2003. But then again, isn't is the album version better? I think maybe actually the album version is better for once. Um, they got it right. I'm proud to believe. So these things are less crucial. Um, track four, Project Blues. I think that might be the best version. Project Blues. Better than heavy construction and construction of live versions. Um, Edge of Blue is better. Track 5, Electric, tends to be much the same. Great track. Track 6 is Happy With What You Have To Be Happy With. Um, I love this song. That's the best version. It's less produced than Power To Believe, I think, so I like that. Uh, track 7 is One Time. Uh, this is a double-edged sword in a way because it's a classic Crimson song You know, of this era, of this epoch. It's one of the best songs. It's fantastic. But it's double-edged sword because they replaced Eyes Wide Open, they decided not to play Eyes Wide Open, they decided to play this instead, sadly. I don't know why. 
Um, I think it's on the rehearsal footage, is the actual Oswald Open song. And it's a traditional, ironic DVD title in that the DVD is called Oswald Open and it's, it wasn't in the performance. Um, but Electric is on here, so that's good. Um, track 8, Facts of Life, meh. Track 9, Power to Believe 2, absolutely killer version. Really, really good. Might be the best, maybe. Track 10, Dangerous, Dangerous Curves, yeah. Which of course goes into, like Talking Drum into, Ox Songs is actually part 4, that might be the best version, I've probably already said that about the heavy construction version, I don't know, maybe, maybe you don't know. Uh, track 12, The World, My Oyster Soup, Kitchen Floor, Wax Museum, this is the encore. I think that's the best version of that song, I think this is a great version, there's just a fun to it, and it's really clean, you can hear it, and it's tighter and funnier. I like the bit when Fripp stops the solo, and it's just the rhythm section, and it's just, it's just great, lots of fun. Right, that's electric. See you quick. <laughs> 